A breath reached for and not found. A patient bewildered, a nurse distressed. A new continuous cough, a high temperature, loss of taste and smell. SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus, COVID-19. What we didn't know, what we hadn't heard of, we know now. The first confirmed death of coronavirus in Britain. An elderly patient with underlying medical conditions. But what now? Eleven extraordinarily long months ago, the first official death from COVID-19 in the UK was announced. Well, you can see it there, projected onto the wall of the British Medical Association. More than 100,000 people have died from COVID-19. Not from flu, as some would like us to believe. This is not fake news, not fake numbers. These are real people who have left behind families and loved ones. In fact, if you take Office for National Statistics data where COVID is mentioned on the death certificate, this suggests the number was actually reached nearly a fortnight ago. And since then, it's been going up, um, you know, at, at almost a thousand a day. And so actually, we're probably, sadly, at about 120,000 at this time. At the start of the pandemic, we tried to show the faces of some of those who had died, but quickly there were too many. Yet here is another one, Tony Brown, just 65. He died on March the 29th. He had all the same symptoms that we've heard about a million times since. Called Mom One, who said pretty much what we're hearing on TV. They said stay at home and take paracetamol. Meanwhile, on TV, all we heard was stay at home and protect the NHS. And, and no one ever really told you what worse or bad would look like or at what point you're supposed to go to hospital. But as his breathing got worse, they did call the paramedics. Got into the back of the ambulance, was taken to Colchester General Hospital, and within five minutes of arriving, he died. He, he died from a cardiac arrest brought on by respiratory failure because his lungs were already too damaged by the virus to help him stay alive. Oh, those are the stories of where we've got it wrong. Tony's son belongs to COVID-19 bereaved families for Justice UK. Like many, they want an independent inquiry into why the UK has been hit so hard. Early modelling gave us figures ranging from the half million if we did nothing to mitigate the risk to this. In seasonal flu, the number of deaths is thought to be about 8,000 excess deaths. So if we can get this down to numbers 20,000 and below, that's a, a good outcome in terms of where we would hope to get to with this outbreak. Understandably, the government doesn't like international comparisons. Countries test differently and have different ways of registering deaths. But these are the figures considered the best you can get. From the World Health Organization, and there is a time lag here, the UK now has the highest number of deaths in Europe and the fifth highest number of deaths globally, with only the US, Brazil, India and Mexico recording more. And from John Hopkins University, looking at deaths per million in each population, we're second behind Portugal. You can make broad comparisons, uh, absolutely. And the broad comparison is that we've done very badly indeed. But cases today were right down in the reported case, right down in the 20,000s. It looks like the deaths will have plateaued. It looks like you know the number of new admissions to hospital is definitely coming down now overall. These are very positive signs. And this country, because it's rolling out the vaccine so well, is going to show a dramatic improvement, I think, in March. This milestone was acknowledged by a Prime Minister who himself had suffered so badly from COVID-19. On this day, I should just really repeat that I am deeply sorry for every uh, life that has been lost. And of course, as, as, uh, as Prime Minister, I take full responsibility for everything that the government uh, has done. What I can tell you is that uh, we truly did everything we could and continue to do everything that we can uh, to minimise loss of life. And all of this from a virus that didn't even have a name until the 11th of February last year. I've been speaking with the SAGE advisor and the government's former chief scientific advisor, Professor Sir Mark Walpert. And I began by asking him if he ever imagined we would reach 100,000 deaths when the pandemic began. 
Well, it is an unimaginable number, but of course, uh, you'll remember that um, Neil Ferguson, when he did his projections, it said that when, you know, if this was unmitigated, the death toll could be as high as half a million. And so it is an absolutely dreadful outcome, and there are lots of lessons to be learned. But uh, pandemic infection is one of nature's major killers. Inevitably, people are going to want to know where we are on the pandemic journey. We are at an absolutely critical phase, and I think that the temptation of people to think that as soon as the numbers start coming down, they, we can relax the social distancing, that's a completely fallacious view. And equally, uh, people who've had their first dose of vaccine are going to have to remain very, very careful because it takes time to work. But does that not summon us, therefore, to consider actually moving on to yet a higher level of lockdown? The bottom line is that we are going to have to be really rigorous in obeying the rules as they stand at the moment. And of course, the reality is that uh, the amount of moving around, so uh, driving, going into work, um, is much higher than it was during the first lockdown um, at the end of March, the beginning of April. So we are going to have to be very, very careful. Very, very careful, but a short, sharp shock might surely produce something quite fundamental. Well, uh, the more social distancing, the faster the, the virus will uh, decay because it won't be able to move from one person to another. Um, so, uh, I mean, the numbers are coming down reasonably at the moment. They're not so well in all parts of the country. And I think the government is going to have to look at further restrictions depending on the response. So, Mark, where do you think we'll be a year from now? I hope in a very different and better place a year from now. Um, uh, but it does depend on rolling out vaccine across the world. And will we be completely back to normal? Uh, I'm not sure about that because the coronavirus is now in human populations and will remain with us. But hopefully it will be reduced to the ranks of the other nasty infections and influenza still kills somewhere between 10 and maybe 20,000 in a bad year every year. And so coronavirus deaths will be part of the landscape of human disease, but hopefully at a level that we are uh, able to live with more easily and uh, the pandemic itself will be in severe decline. Sir Mark Walpott, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Travellers arriving in Britain from the coronavirus hotspots could be made to quarantine in designated hotels to limit the spread of new variants of the virus. Ministers are meeting this evening to discuss the proposals. They could be imposed on people flying in from parts of the world where virulent new strains have broken out, like Southern Africa and South America. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is in Westminster. Gary. Well, that Cabinet Committee looking at the quarantine idea started sitting at 6.30, so we think it's still sitting. And I think there are two options still on the table there. Uh, does quarantine apply to people coming from all countries or just people uh, coming from some countries? Discussion still to go on about that, but it sounds like a policy is going to emerge soon. Of course, just before that meeting started, the Prime Minister was at that press conference. You saw a clip from it in uh, Victoria's film. Number 10 clearly thought that you couldn't have a moment like this with the death toll reaching, uh, breaching the 100,000 level uh, without a prime ministerial moment. And they also wanted to make sure that the prime minister's uh, words matched the moment. Boris Johnson sometimes accused of uh, always looking for the sunny uplands a bit and telling you he'll save Christmas or uh, lift lockdown soon, the rest of it. But I think the hope was that his solemn words matched the very solemn moment. I think the other thing we learned in that press conference, though, was listening to Chris Whitty the chief medical officer, speaking with real candour about how scientists were worried that the third lockdown that we're in now, with all its restrictions, might not be enough to contain the new variant that had been identified within the uh, UK. He said it was just containing it, stabilising it. It would be difficult to, uh, to get infection rates uh, down. And you couldn't help feeling that he was trying to signal something to the Prime Minister, do not relax this lockdown too early. No new policy in that press conference, but we are getting a new policy on quarantine by the look of it pretty soon. Arrivals at Manchester Airport this morning. New quarantine rules for England being discussed by ministers tonight could mean they're soon no longer free to drag their bags home, but required to stay for 10 days in a hotel room nearby. The government's been in discussion with major hotel chains to make thousands of hotel rooms available. 
We could turn around a hotel that's open and trading within 24 hours. Uh, for hotels which are closed, it could probably take 48 hours. But we're ready, we're waiting, we have all the procedures in place, we have all the safety procedures and policies in place, and we're ready to do this as soon as we're given the green light. I just don't know why people can't self-isolate in the homes. You know, I don't know if it's a control thing, is it? I don't know. What's the purpose behind it? It should have been, because this, 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 this um, coronavirus situation is very uh, hard for all the people, so you need to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Those in quarantine could be charged well over £1,000 to pay for their board, lodging and private security guards. It's a policy that's been repeatedly rejected by the government, but it now says the new Covid variants around the world endangering the vaccine rollout I mean it must adopt the same sort of hotel quarantine approach that's in place in Australia. The police will walk you to your hotel room and instruct you that you're not allowed to leave for 14 nights. This is our room. There's a phone on there which we have to answer if it rings because it will be the government or the Red Cross doing a welfare check. We aren't allowed outside our door except to open it for rubbish and to open it when the nurses knock for our two COVID tests but we aren't allowed to open it to talk to anyone. We just have security at the bottom of our elevator um, but to be honest they were very clear with the rules so I, if you are wanting to break out that you will be stopped immediately there's no way we could exit quarantine rules will be layered on top of a third lockdown which the government's chief medical officer said is working despite the new covid variant identified in britain but only just this lockdown he warned should not be relaxed too early